we have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. You're kidding. No. Theory and science fiction. Can you say E.T.? E.T. It is really disheartening to hear of the harassment that our panelists have faced all because they're studying this topic. NASA stands behind our panelists and we do not tolerate abuse. Harassment only leads to further stigmatization of the UAP field, significantly hindering the scientific progress and discouraging others to study this important subject matter. Most Americans believe intelligent life exists beyond Earth, and a majority say UAPs under investigation are likely proof of contact. When it comes to aliens, uh... There are some things I just can't tell you. The Pentagon has reluctantly confirmed the legitimacy of UFO images, including these photos taken off the coast of Virginia and the better known videos, the so-called Tic Tac incident and the gimbal. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. <laughs> some former Pentagon insiders claim the government has more evidence than it's publicly acknowledged. Do you believe that that life from somewhere else, while you ran this program, came here, visited, observed. Through the observation, scientific methodologies that were applied to, to look at this phenomena, that these aircraft, we'll call them aircraft, are displaying characteristics that are not currently within the U.S. inventory, nor in any foreign inventory that, that we are aware of. Is it risky for you to say, you know, in public that you believe I don't in, in UFOs and aliens? I don't care. Why not? It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality of what I know. Oh my God, I want to talk about the hearing on Wednesday, the UFO, UAP, UAP is I guess what we're calling them now. I'm going to use UFO and UAPs interchangeably um, in this video because I'm very professional. As you can tell, my tinfoil hat. When I first watched the hearing, I wanted to know more about like the context of everything. I wanted to know who these people were, what their background was. Did they have like some sort of issue? Um, are they crazy? Why is this happening? How did this happen? Oh, a million questions, a million questions on top of like what they were actually talking about. So I got to Googling. The way I want to do this video is basically I want to put things in context. I want to give you some history about how this came to be as usual give you guys the facts of everything and then i do want to talk about some theories as usual and then you can decide for yourself during the hearing one of the lawmakers mentioned an article by leslie keen in the new york times and said everyone watching this like basically i suggest you read this article and when i looked into leslie keen of the new york times i found several articles about this topic and really these articles essentially led to this hearing and opened up this can of worms all the way back in 2017. this article was one of new york times most read and shared articles and it basically exposed this secret program within the pentagon the department of defense that basically was investigating claims of UFOs slash UAPs. And the director who had just resigned in protest of this program was talking to this journalist on the record about the findings of this program and this was huge news. The program is called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, aka a tip. So this program was created in 2007. Nevada Senator Harry Reid is the one who requested the funding for this program. This program ended up getting funded $22 million. Now, most of that money went to Harry's longtime friend, a man by the name of Robert Bigelow. Robert Bigelow is a billionaire and he owns this company. And that company is an aerospace research company and it works with NASA to create spacecrafts. According to Harry Reid, who's by the way very proud of this program and his funding of it, he says that his decision to have it funded came from Robert Bigelow, his friend. According to Harry Reid, Robert Bigelow came to him and told him that an official from the Defense Intelligence Agency wanted to meet and that he wanted to discuss the, sorry, my dog's click clacking. 
starting a research program to research these UAPs. Harry Reid has this meeting and he basically is convinced that this is worth researching. People have been seeing them. There's sort of a stigma uh, with bringing this forward, but these things need to be looked into because these, these are like flying objects or whatever aerial phenomena that move in ways and behave in ways that aren't really known to humans in terms of like the laws of physics and what we know about science currently and so they want to look into it and these are some of the findings from that program that were released in this article in 2017. They discovered that there were aircrafts that moved in ways that seemed to defy known laws of physics that they moved at quote high velocities no visible signs of propulsion and no apparent means of lift and that Robert Bigelow's company had these facilities in Las Vegas that housed materials from these UAPs and that the program also studied people who were working on these materials who had sort of side effects as a result of exposure to these materials. The videos that we now have seen circulated that leaked in 2017 that three years later were confirmed by the Pentagon as legitimate videos of UAPs. These videos were also reviewed by this program at this time way back then. Robert Bigelow did an interview with 60 Minutes where he straight out said that he absolutely believes in the existence of aliens. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. I spent millions and millions. I probably spent more as an individual than anybody else in the United States has ever spent. Is it risky for you to say, you know, in public that you believe I don't in, give in a UFOs damn. and aliens? I don't care. Why not? It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality of what I know. You can find it here. Yeah. <laughs> Where exactly? It's just like right under people's noses. In 2009, the director of this program, he wrote a brief for the Pentagon. His name is Luis Elizondo. And in this brief, he said, that what was considered science fiction is now science fact, and that the United States was incapable of defending itself against some of the technologies discovered. He resigned in protest in 2017, went on the record for this article, and gave this information. The reason why he resigned from this program is that he felt there was unnecessary secrecy and too much internal opposition for the program. He wrote a, a resignation letter to the uh, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis and he said in there, quote, why aren't we spending more time and effort on this issue? So as you can imagine, when this article came out, it was a big deal. Like I said, most read and most shared or one of on the New York Times at the time. And so it led to a lot of things. First of all, it led to other articles by the same journalists for the New York Times that revealed more things, things that led to this hearing. So the witnesses in this hearing, the Tic Tac video of that object, that flying object that looks like a Tic Tac, the commander who talked about that, he had an article where he went in depth into this and talked about what he saw. This was back in 2017 and his thing was like, there was no investigation, no one's talked to me about it, and I think that people should talk about this because we don't know what this is and there's, we're not looking into it. 2019, two years later, another article, New York Times, same journalist, and the other witness in this hearing, Ryan Graves, this was an article with him talking about what he saw and the things that he talked about in the hearing. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at that, man. Look at the fly. Crew of the USS Omaha detected on multiple sensor systems unknown objects that surrounded the ship as it moved through ocean waters west of San Diego. One of the objects, a self-illuminated sphere at least six feet in diameter, flew alongside the Omaha for an extended period. Similar events were reported by eight other Navy ships in the same area over three days. But other than the images themselves, there's been no release of sensor data to buttress these cases. There is now. Well, if you can write a general that long where we're at, and then the number of contacts you got, get the course and speed meters off. Two different radar systems watched the objects and estimated their speed. Track 781 just sped up to 46 knots, 50 knots, closing in. That one's pretty much perfectly zero, zero, zero relative, right? 
Yeah. The Pentagon's UAP task force considers the Omaha spheres to be true unknowns. The ships that were under observation by the unknowns were unable to track where they came from or where they disappeared to. The Omaha sphere appears to have vanished into the ocean. Splashed. Splashed. At that point, it also vanished from all sensors. Nine of the objects were seen around the Omaha, but two of them dropped off, somehow invisible to two radar systems. Today, less than four hours after that video was made public by us, a Pentagon spokesperson confirmed it is legit. Now, this article was a bit more alarming than the one in 2017 with the Tic Tac thing because this one, they talked about how they almost had collisions with these UAPs and how they would come at them and they felt like it was a more combative or sorry, hostile is the word they used. And also it made them because at first they thought maybe this is like a very advanced, you know, top secret classified like drone program that we don't know about, like new technology they're testing we don't know about. But when they came towards them in this way, they felt like this wouldn't be how a domestic program would behave because they would know that we're having these trainings in this area. They wouldn't even be here. And even if they were in the area somewhat close, they would not come in this quote hostile manner. So now they're like, this is a safety risk. It's a threat. We don't know what this is. Dr. Kirkpatrick, he's going to factor in later, but he is the director of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office known as Arrow. And it is supposed to investigate UFOs slash UAPs, figure out what they are, where they come from, all of that. So remember that program I told you about earlier, ATIP, the one that they talked about 2017? ATIP was restructured and reorganized and it became the UAP task force. David Crush was part of the UAP task force. That then was restructured and reorganized and became this arrow. Dr. Kirkpatrick is the current director of this current program. Now, I want you to remember Kirkpatrick because he's gonna factor in later. David Crush. So when he was a part of this task force, he had very, very high level clearances. He had access to a lot of things and he was conducting an investigation. As part of this investigation, he says that high-ranking officials told him about the existence of legacy, like black, like super, super classified programs that had like non-human intelligence spacecraft that crashed or landed and that they had it to reverse engineer it and oh, by the way, uh, what he calls non-human biologic, meaning like, you know, extraterrestrial or non-human or interdimensional beings, essentially, that have been retrieved from these crafts. There was malevolence from these non-human biologics and have been in the possession of the government since the 30s. And that this has been going on for decades and that the government is like actively uh, creating a disinformation campaign, what he calls sophisticated disinformation campaign. He says that at first he didn't believe it. He thought like this is crazy, but then he started to see things that made it credible to him. The people that were telling him this, the amount of people that were telling him this. And not only that, but he said he saw video and photographs of these crafts, not of the uh, beings or like uh, biologics that are non-human, but of the craft. And all of that together made him believe. Then he said he started to see that there were some unethical, illegal things as a part of this program because, you know, you've got checks and balances in the government, the different branches of government. And so things like that need what's known as congressional oversight. Congress needs to know about these things. And if they don't know about it, then they can kind of go about unchecked. And he said that was happening. And there was misappropriation of funds because it was secret. So they had to do illegal things there. And then he said there were awful things that were happening in their quest to keep it quiet in terms of hurting people. And, you know, he was vague about it, but definitely implied it. Another thing he had an issue with is that he said that these non-human aircraft 
were being held in a private defense contractor like corporation, a huge one, in their custody, and that he felt like this was something that could benefit humanity, science, like human knowledge, but it was being hoarded by this one company. Chill the motherfucker out. So according to Brush, okay, the reason why people were being silenced in this way was because they wanted to like kind of hoard this information. This is valuable information. They're trying to reverse engineer this material and they know that they have something super valuable and that this corporation, this defense contracting company that has access to this is preventing essentially what Grush is saying, the public from having access to it, studying it, having more people try to reverse engineer it, and that it would benefit all of us, the greater good. Instead, they're keeping it for profit. And he thought that this was not only illegal, but unethical, and he wanted to speak out about it. So what did he do? Well, in 2021, he goes to the inspector general and he tells the inspector general basically that there is this program going on and this is everything here. This is my evidence. This is what I have. And what ends up happening is some way, somehow it leaks to other members of the Department of Defense and the intelligence community that he went to the inspector general and told all this information. And he claims that after that was revealed, he was getting retaliation and harassment from the government, essentially. Brush does not specify what, what this retaliation and harassment is because it's part of the investigation, but maybe one day if it's, you know, done and declassified, we might find out, but we don't know what that is. What we do know is that a year after this was brought to the inspector general, the inspector general concluded that it was credible and urgent, and that's when the whistleblower investigation began, and that's what's currently going on right now. He's not like the first or only person who has made these claims. What made it different was the sort of credibility that was surrounding this guy, because not only was he credible in terms of his credentials and his access, but his accounts were corroborated by other people who are also credible. And there was an official investigation done by the inspector general of the intelligence committee. And he found his information that he supplied to him as quote, urgent and credible. And now there's this whole investigation going on. The, the, the thing though, is that we don't have access to a lot of the claims that he's making. Some things he's saying he's just heard, like he's never seen pictures and then other things he's seen pictures and, but he's got names and locations and details and stuff. And he's supposedly given the authorities all this information. The reason why the inspector general says this is credible is because it was corroborated by several people, people who didn't know each other, people who he didn't even mention and know, Grush. And that the physical evidence, like the videos and the photographs and things like that were also supplied to the inspector general. And so all of this information together seemed to convince the inspector general that we need to take this a step further. Another thing that happened from this is that then the intelligence committees in the Senate and in the House basically were notified of this and Grush went to them in secret in 2022 and gave them all this information and told them as well. The group that has th that sort of clearance to get this information, not everyone in Congress has that clearance. So behind the scenes, this is all going on. And then something happens. This video is sponsored by arguably my favorite sponsor, Every Plate. Every Plate is a meal kit delivery service. It's 25% cheaper than grocery shopping, but they still give you high quality ingredients. And the way they're able to do this is the ingredients are pre-portioned, so you never have any waste, and the recipes are simple. So usually they're ready in about six simple steps. For example, this pork chop, I would never think to put like, apricot or is it apricot apricot jam with sriracha soy sauce a little water garlic in the pan and make a sauce but it was so good it was like hitting all the 
flavor points. And the carrots, who, who doesn't love a carrot? Okay, I love a carrot. Okay, my buck teeth, I love a carrot. I'm rabbit, carrot. So if you guys are interested, you can get $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code 49NOR. That's going to everyplate.com, entering code 49NOR to get $1.49 per meal. Thank you guys so much for watching this and thank you to Everyplate for being such a supporter of my channel. I love them. All right, back to the video. April 7th, 2023, Grush leaves his job. He leaves his job and although he was getting like retaliation and things like that, he still had his job. The retaliation seems to be in part what we know. There could be worse and things we don't know, but at the very least we know that his classification was revoked after he did this. And that is seen as a retaliatory act that is protected under the whistleblower uh, protection. I think it's like PP, what is it? PP19 or something? PP99? I forget. But that's what's protected under that is that when you are trying to report abuse or sort of illegal activity and then your uh, clearance is revoked as a punishment, that's not allowed. He leaves his job April 7th, 2023. About a week later, April 19th, 2023, something happens. Remember Dr. Kirkpat Kirkpatrick. I don't know why I can't say the second K. Dr. Kirkpatrick... Dr. Kirkpatrick is director of Arrow. He goes public and he talks about the UAPs and his findings. So I'm going to walk you through two cases that we've uh, declassified recently. Um, this first one is an MQ-9 in the Middle East observing that blow up, which is an apparent spherical object via EO sensors. Those are not IR. You'll see it uh, come through the top of the screen. There it goes. And then the camera will slew to follow it. You'll see it pop in and out of the field of view there. This is essentially all of the data we have associated with this event from some years ago. It is going to be virtually impossible to fully identify that just based off of that video. As we get more data, we will be able to go back and look at these in a fuller context. This particular uh, event, South Asia MQ-9, unlike the previous one, this one actually shows some really interesting things that everyone thought was truly anomalous to start with. First of all, it's a high-speed object that's flying in the field of regard of two MQ-9s. Second, it appears to have this uh, trail behind it. All right, which at first blush, you would think that looks like a propulsion trail. We pulled these apart frame by frame. We were able to demonstrate that that is essentially a readout uh, overlap of the image. It's a, it's a shadow image, right? It's not real. And so what you're looking at is, this is in the infrared, this is the heat signature off of the engines of a commuter aircraft that happened to be flying in the vicinity of where those two MQ-9s were at. This is the kind of data that we have to work with. How many have been resolved and sort of in what buckets? And then how many are still left to be resolved? As of this week, uh, we are tracking over a total of 650 cases. Uh, I think we'll, we're currently sitting at around, hmm, if I remember correctly, we're around 20 to 30-ish are about halfway through that analytic process. And he basically says, here's what we found. It all can be explained. It's not what it looks like. We don't have evidence of anything, you know, extraterrestrial or whatever. Like, we don't have proof that this exists. We're going to keep looking and we'll go where the evidence takes us. But, like, we don't have that. And then what happens after that, about a month later, is when Grush goes public with these explosive claims. So when you look at it in the timeline, it's kind of interesting. And I mean, you know, put your tin falls the hat on because it, it might seem to some people that like they were trying to get ahead of the story, that they knew that he was going to say this because he had to get clearance from the Pentagon to talk about some of these things, which he was able to do. And that is another thing people talk about is how did that happen? But it apparently happened very quickly. And they don't even know if like, 
the level of what he was going to say and also if they could actually stop him from saying it because he wasn't disclosing anything classified. As you can see, when he talks publicly, he really says, I can't talk about this. It's classified. I can't. So I'm not sure how much they could restrict him, but they knew he was going to talk about this on April 7th. And then April 19th, this guy's coming out and saying, we don't have evidence of that. Some people think it sounds like he's trying to get ahead of this. They're trying to get ahead of the story. The bombshell interview with News Nation. Uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace. Anybody who may come forward with that kind of information is low. Dude, for real. And so even in the, the interview was like, are you crazy? Do you have mental illness? Do you have any kind of mental illness? No. Have you ever had a psychosis, a no. delusion? The bombshell interview with News Nation, it came out as well as this article in the debrief that, by the way, same journalist, Leslie Keen, different newspaper. It's been with the New York Times this whole time for all these years, but now it's with the debrief. She was asked about this and turns out there's an interesting story with that. The reason why it was now with the debrief and not the New York Times is because the New York Times, as well as they chopped it to other publications like the Politico and maybe the Washington Post, um, they have a very rigorous and time-consuming like fact-checking process that they go through. And Leslie has had no problem passing this process with these publications, and they publish it, and it's good. So that wasn't the issue. The issue was time. According to Leslie, it leaked that Grush was coming out to say all these things, and he started getting harassed. And it became a thing where they felt like in order to protect him, they had to go public with the article. And so they ended up going to a publication that was able to vet them quicker. And so that is an interesting thing that I want to mention. When I was going through, I was like, why is it with the debrief and not the New York Times? That's why. Department of Defense comes out after this interview and all that. And they, you know, they're like, we don't have evidence of this. Like, nope. Mm -mm. But we're going to look into it. And if we do, we'll let you know. At the time, it was just an article in the debrief and an interview on News Nation. It didn't have that sort of like weight of a congressional hearing. He wasn't under oath. What kicked this into high gear was this hearing that happened Wednesday. It was interesting during the hearing in the beginning when the lawmakers were talking, they were saying that like this president said believes in UFO like Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter. And like, we've actually faced a lot of pushback from the intelligence community. They did not want us to do this hearing. They've been trying to stop us. It, people have been getting threats and like, there's an active, you know, cover up. Even the word cover up was mentioned and we aren't crazy. This isn't like little green men, but th these are legitimate things that we don't know that appear to be kind of otherworldly. And we don't have the space to report them. We don't have adequate investigations. It's not transparent. Like we're not trying to compromise national security because obviously you can't reveal everything, but there's like a stigma and a pushback and, and a backlash to talking about this. And that's what makes it weird and suspicious. I obviously watched the hearing, but also I found the transcripts of their testimony, the three witnesses. What happens is before they actually had the hearing. They wrote their testimony and that was submitted to Congress and Congress uploads it on their official website. And that's where I got it from and read it. And it's linked in my description if you want to read it. But I want to read you some things of it because it's longer and more detailed than the speeches that they gave at the hearing. And it contains information they didn't talk about that I think is important. And I'm curious why they didn't. It seems like they backtracked because some of that stuff is a little like, Oh my God, but I want to read it to you. This is from Ryan Graves' written testimony. He says, recently, I have received confirmation that these encounters were also a shock to the chain of command from one of our advisors at ASA, Rear Admiral Tim Gala Galadet, former head of Na the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and Oceanographer of the Navy. While serving as an admiral with Fleet Forces Command, he received a classified email on Cipernet in 2015 from his boss, the operations commander to 
all one and two star admiral subordinates. The title of the email was Urgent Safety of Flight Issue. He attached the now famous Go Fast UAP video from a Navy FA-18 asking if anyone knew their origin and expressed safety of flight concerns about multiple, multiple sorry, near mid-air collisions with UAP in the early warning area off Virginia Beach where my encounters occurred, noting they might shut down the exercise for safety reasons. He says that this admiral reviewed it with his deputy. The next day, the email was removed removed from his system and that of his deputy, and despite meeting with this group routinely in person, no one ever discussed it. He presumes the email was removed in connection with a classified special access program. He couldn't believe there was no discussion of an urgent safety of flight issue. He has stated publicly that after seeing the report, he didn't believe these UAP represent any known human technology. Talking about emails being deleted sounds like cover up tinfoil hacks, conspiracy. There's another thing that starts coming up where he talks about consequences of people who report this. Stigma attached to UAP is real and powerful and challenges national security. It silences commercial pilots who fear professional repercussions, discourages witnesses, and is only compounded by recent government claims questioning the credibility of eyewitness testimony. And then, also in his written testimony, Ryan Graves, that he didn't say during the hearing, was about Dr. Kirkpatrick. According to Ryan Graves' written testimony, he said, the director, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, said in the recent NASA independent study team meeting that metallic orbs traveling up to Mach 2 with no visible lifting surface or propulsion are being seen all over the world, but that Aero needs access to scientifically calibrated instruments to evaluate these UAP. However, last week, in his first public interview, he indicated he has what he needs. I am unsure why or if his statement has changed. The Pentagon's top UFO investigator speaking exclusively to ABC News. You've seen no convincing, seen confirmable no evidence convincing. of intact spacecraft kept by the U.S. government. No. Is it possible there is some secret program that you're just not aware of? I don't think so. The next person who spoke in the hearing, who really was like, I would say, the big bombshell thing, was David Grush, who was known as the UFO whistleblower because he had the most shocking claims. We have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft. Biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Anyone been murdered? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. The things that were being said were historically always considered crazy shit to say. But now they're being said in this setting where the people are listening to it who would have called it crazy and they're acting like this is very valid shit. And it's like, what the fuck? That was my reaction. And, you know, there were all these things that were being talked about, about like, um, how this all kind of is connected with like nuclear weapons and how these like UFOs would show up and nuclear facilities in the US over the years and decades past and like disarm them for a little bit. Were the aliens trying to like stop us from using the nukes because they showed up right after like the Roswell thing happened, like a couple years after the um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and so is it like because of that and then there was this 1971 agreement that was referenced by Grush during the hearing where it's between Russia and the United States it's article 3 where it talks about you know they have to notify each other of unidentified flying objects that aren't each other so it would be something else because that's another thing people were saying how do you know it's not like Russian or Chinese or something like it may not be American but it could be foreign like really nobody else can make things and so it was like no it's not anything that we know like in humanity like the collective knowledge is what he's saying so a lot of crazy things were also revealed during the question and answer session of the hearing do do you believe there's an active disinformation campaign within our government to deny existence of UAPs, yes or no? As previ previously stated publicly, yes. I think previously with like Project Blue Book, yes, but currently I don't speak for the United States government. What percentage of UAP sightings in your belief go unreported by our pilots? 
Uh, I would estimate we're somewhere near 5% reporting, perhaps. Did the Tic Tac UAP move in such a way that defied the laws of physics? The way we understand them, yes. I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. And no. you're, you're not aware of any other objects that anybody in the world has in this world that has those capabilities. No, I think it's far beyond actually our material science that we currently possess. Several months ago, my office received a protected disclosure from Eglin Air Force Base indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. We asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that uh, I am not able to attach to any human capability, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating what I can only describe as an orb, again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down. He said that his FLIR system malfunctioned. The, the technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had. You're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants, and leave. And there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. And they asked... Grush about, you know, retaliation. He said like he and his wife saw something horrible and like, but he couldn't talk about it. Like it was very vague. And he kept telling them that he would tell them in, in a classified setting or if things were people who had clearance, he would tell them. And they talk about the skiff, which is like this container, like a Faraday cage where you can't sort of like monitor or release this information. It's like a secure room essentially where they can talk about this and feel safe that it won't go out to the public. And they talked about looking into it more and sort of setting the groundwork for more investigation. Like this is really just the beginning. This is so the beginning, I think, I hope we'll see. So, you know, the takeaway here was, you know, these accusations are, are being made and they're saying that there's brutal tactics and pushback that's happening, that these are very underreported the Graves said like only 5% of these sightings are reported because of the stigma that it's mostly like commercial pilots and, you know, people in the Air Force that see these things, but there's no like safe channel for them to talk about it without getting, you know, punishment essentially. And so it's unsafe because they need to be investigated because we don't know what they are and the technology is so advanced that we don't know how to fight it if they wanted to be hostile. And so why is this happening? What can we do about it? That was kind of like the message at the end. Those are the facts and the context and the backstory of the hearing. Now I wanna talk about some theories that people are talking about a lot now, ever since this came up and looking at it with a different lens. And I, and I wanna talk about it with you, please. Thank you so much. When Gresh made the claim that there's a specific Con defense contractor company that is housing these materials. People wanted to know who it is. I mean, they asked them straight up in Congress, like, who is it? And he said, I can't say it, it's classified, but I can tell you, and I've told the inspector general exactly the company, the division, the names of the people involved, everything. And so of course, what's happening? Speculation. People are having guesses, allegedly. My conspiracy, don't sue me, these are guesses. Guess, maybe, you know, I don't know, it's not for sure. But there were three names that kept popping up. Um, the first one was Lockheed Martin. Second one was Boeing. And the third one was Raytheon. And so Lockheed was mentioned because it's like the biggest one. And it seems like, you know, the biggest one that's like the most elaborate would have sort of the means and the capacity to reverse engineer it and do that. So that's why that one was mentioned. Boeing as well, because it's already connected in a lot of those things and also a huge one. Raytheon is big too, but there was a connection with Raytheon that people brought up that I think was interesting, which leads me into um, the theories that I want to talk about. So 
the whole thing really started when you talk about these UFO conspiracies, particularly in the United States in the context of what we're talking about, is the Roswell incident, the crash that happened in 1947. Because this is exactly what this guy Grush is saying, right? Multi-decade disinformation campaign of them retrieving, you know, the spacecraft and the non-human biologic and the whole Roswell conspiracy theory is exactly that. That that this alien spacecraft crashed and there were aliens there and, you know, the government is lying about it. And so the way that it went down is that in 1947, when this crash first happened, there was an official report that a flying disc, flying saucer was seen and it crashed. Then later on, the officials changed the story. And this is when all the confusion came out, which led to something known as Project Blue Book, which was an investigation, official one with the FBI and the intelligence, where they looked into it and they ended up coming out and saying, this is not any type of alien or spacecraft or anything. This is actually just like a big, big misunderstanding. They're like, it's two Air Force like crashes because it's happened near an Air Force in Roswell. And like the things that they saw in the sky that were bizarre, those were like optical illusions, weather inversions, like weather balloons, like um, birds, like it just was, basically not what you thought you saw. And when, cause I read also like the project blue book, like, and I saw the pictures and stuff and regarding the aliens, I thought what was interesting was that they said the people who said they saw like the alien bodies, like non-human things, those were actually like crash dummies. And they included pictures of these crash dummies and like we use them. And this was like all a training thing that you guys are like misunderstanding what this is. Internally and initially, they thought it was a flying saucer, like the officials, they said the flying saucer. And then internally, in 1952, um, Major General John Sanford, he was the Air Force Director of Intelligence, he briefed the FBI and said it was, quote, not entirely impossible that the objects sighted may possibly be ships from another planet such as Mars. And this is according to official government documents. But then... Um, they were afraid of like this hysteria and all this stuff going on. Remember, it's like Cold War and like people are freaking out and now there's like aliens. And so he comes out and says, no, that's not what this is. He kind of leaves it open by saying we've seen some things and whatever, but we're not sure. But like we don't have any evidence that this is from another planet. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. Since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports that have come to us from all kinds of sources. Of this great mass of reports, we have been able adequately to explain the great bulk of them. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes, as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, as meteorological or electronic phenomena, or as light aberration. However, there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. Our basic difficulty in dealing with these is that there is no measurement of them that makes it possible for us to put them in any pattern that would be profitable for a deliberate, uh, custom sort of analysis to take the next step. We have, as of date, come to only one firm conclusion with respect to this remaining percentage. And that is that it does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency that we can relate with any, to any conceivable threat to the United States. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. At the time, right, it got debunked officially. But there's always been a group of people who didn't believe it and who said, no, I saw what I saw and people who believed them. 
Major Keyhole, as author of the book Flying Saucers Are Real, what is your opinion of these new sightings of unidentified objects? With all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. During a three-year investigation, I found that many pilots have described objects of substance and high speed. One case, pilots reported their plane was buffeted by an object which passed them at 500 miles an hour. Obviously, this was a solid object, and I believe it was from outer space. But as time went on, these people became known as crazy tinfoil people, which is why I wear a tinfoil hat as a joke when I talk about theories, right? This all comes from that. What people are speculating might be true now or are looking at is the fact that, first of all, is the Roswell thing real? And second of all, right, Truman was president at the time, and there was another conspiracy theory that uh, was also officially debunked. And it's known as the Majestic 12. And this one was like really, really debunked. I mean, there are even people in the UFO community that think it's bullshit. But now, right, people are talking about it because what it is is basically that Truman created a program with 12 really high level, like intelligence, military, science people whose job was to you know, retrieve these crash materials, re you know, reverse engineer them and keep it a secret. Everything that Grush said. I went through all the 12 people. It's like basically this document came out that they say was uh, an official document that states all this, but the way that they debunked it was they said the document was fake and the whole thing was a hoax. And they are so many articles about like the scratches and the dates and like the person who wrote it from this area was actually not in that area. And like so many things to where it seems like it was debunked. Okay, so remember before when I told you the theories about the defense contractors, the companies, and I said Raytheon factors into it. The way it factors into it is that one of the people who is allegedly accused of being part of the Majestic 12 is someone called Vannevar Bush, who um, was actually a director of the Raytheon company, which is a very large defense contractor. So the way they're connecting it is by saying that if a director of this contracting company was part of this program, then it would make sense that this contracting company would be the one that's housing the crafts because the director is part of the program. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, whatever. That's the conspiracy theory and that's it. Again, now everything's back in question. Is Was that whole thing part of the sophisticated disinformation campaign or was it a hoax? I don't know. You tell me. One of the people who's rumored to be part of this Majestic 12 is um, R.H. Hillen Coder, Roscoe Henry Hillen Coder. And he was um, the director of the CIA, essentially, um, back in the day. And in the 40s and 50s, he was a big part of like the intelligence. And like so during the time of this Roswell incident. And he was quoted in the New York Times in 1960 in a letter to Congress. He said, behind the scenes, high ranking Air Force officers are soberly concerned about UFOs, but through official secrecy and ridicule, many citizens are led to believe the unknown flying objects are nonsense. Again, right? You have this person who has this knowledge, insider information, and he's saying something like this. What do you guys think? What do you think? I want to know. Oh my gosh, I want to know. Another theory that had been officially debunked that people are bringing up now is basically what's known as the Davis Williamson memo. Wilson, not Williamson. I'm so sorry. It's Wilson. I'm going to say Williamson over and over again. It's Wilson. Sorry. Which I found this that was uh, uploaded officially on, uh, like a government website. I think it was the congress congress.gov, if I'm not mistaken. I'll link it below, whatever. The point is, um, this person, Eric Davis, he was made to seem like a crazy person and lost his credibility some, somewhere down the line. Uh, but his history is that, remember that program I told you about, ATIP, the one that had been going on in 2007 that was funded by Harry Reid and all that. He, Eric, was uh, an associate of the program and he has clearances. He's been involved uh, with the director of ATIP, who is Luis 
Elizondo, the person who resigned in protest. And he apparently claims that he had this meeting with Admiral, Admiral, um, Admiral Williamson during this meeting, which he took a lot of notes on, which is what this memo is, that he, this Admiral w Williamson talks about the, you know, Roswell and like the Majestic 12 and like all these conspiracy theories and kind of gives it validity and talks about how they kind of, he had the clearance to find out about some of these things, but they blocked it. And it was kind of explosive at the time. So Admiral Williamson denies everything in this memo where he says, if you tell people about this, I will deny anything to do with this. I'm not surprised that he is denying it because he said he would, if it's true. If it's not true, I don't know, it's not true. But again, right? People are looking at it differently now. The other thing people are talking about, and this I've heard from people in my life, is Bob Lazar. And I remember hearing about this, and I personally thought it was debunked because of all the like inconsistencies with where he said he went to school and they couldn't find records of it and the story he told. Uh, there's really no way I can prove it without revealing my identity and getting myself into more trouble than I have already. Well, there's several... Uh actually nine uh, flying saucers, flying discs, uh, that are out there of extraterrestrial origin. Where, where did we get these saucers? Uh, how did they come into the hands of the government? I haven't the slightest idea. Dennis, whose real name is Bob Lazar, met our news unit in front of the home of John Lear. Hello and welcome to On the Record. So my guest again this week is UFO researcher, former state Senate candidate and uh, award-winning pilot, John Lear. Are they green from what you know? Uh, are they all the same or we got different kinds of them? George is at least 70 different species and probably more. We see the little gray ones. They're about uh, four and a half feet tall. We see the ones that uh, are called the Nordics. And they're about seven feet tall, look like us, but they're invariably blonde hair and blue eyed. They're one of the species that we have on ice. Uh, one of their crashes we recovered. Are there good aliens and bad aliens? Well, good aliens what you and know? bad aliens and all kinds of ways and reasons for interacting with us. Here's the night John Lear saw his first flying disc. Two months before the Dennis interview, Lazar began taking a few friends out to the desert. They focused their attention not on Groom Lake, but in the direction of Papoose Lake, which is where Lazar said he worked, a facility he called S4. And sure enough, on each of three outings, the groups witnessed a glowing disc rise above Papoose, even though officially there has never been a base or facility there. How did he know? Months later, when his identity was revealed, Bob Lazar said he worked at a secret facility near Groom Lake where alien technology was being reverse engineered. This is the simple drawing he made at the time. This main level with the gravity amplifiers and the level below, the craft that I worked on, that when it's when it's going to travel a long distance, that is how it operates. It flies along and it, it puts its belly to the target and then brings all the amplifiers to power and, you know, it shoots off in that direction. It doesn't fly as it would in a science fiction movie. It flies with the belly, the bottom forward. If the description of a spacecraft tilting sounds familiar, take a look at the so-called Gimbal UFO, a video released by the Pentagon in 2017. Because he talked about, right, reverse engineering, crashes, elements. What's element 115? Element 115 is a, a super heavy element. The craft uses larger quantities of it, 223 gram little triangles of it. But it's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation, it produces its own gravitational field its own anti-gravitational field, and it's what's used to lift and propel the craft and create distortions around it. It's, a, it's an amazing material, and it's certainly nothing that occurs here or naturally. Researchers in Sweden say they've made one by slamming together the atoms of calcium and americium, and it's a beast. Its atomic number is 115, much heavier than lead or uranium. Its temporary name is ununpentium, much harder to say than lead or uranium. But you can't see it. Right after the atoms collided, the element disappeared in a flash of radiation. It, it doesn't exist in nature. Swedish scientists can't say they invented it. Russian researchers first made this element in 2004. And then lastly, the last conspiracy I want to talk about is something called Project 
blue beam, which is basically a theory that this is all a ruse and a distraction and part of like this joint project between NASA and the United Nations and like New World Order to create like new age spirituality so that, you know, and make us think about these like extraterrestrial like world things so that they can basically like control us and um, like I, there's some shit about the Antichrist in there. I don't know. It sounds pretty nuts to me, but people are bringing it up now. And they're like, this is all part of Project Bluebeam. So that's the theories portion of this video. I would love to know what you guys think about everything. I want to know what you think about the people like Grush and the different witnesses and whether you think they're credible or not. What do you think about the whole thing? I also want to know the different theories that I mentioned, like, you know, Roswell and all that stuff. What do you guys think? Has anyone personally seen a UFO yourself? I haven't. I feel left out. I haven't seen it myself. I wish I did. Kind of lame. Um, as for what I think, like, I think, I think that it's possible that there is sort of this technology that governments have found that they don't understand and they don't want people to know because they want to understand it first because it's so far superior they don't want to give up the upper, upper hand and they can say it's national security it's you know whatever they just want to have the upper hand and figure it out that I can believe easy in terms of the non-human biologic, and that is the one that has the least evidence, like there's no pictures of that, it's just people talking, and then, you know, I don't know, that part, again, not impossible, but whoa, I would need some proof to believe it, I want to know, like, are they really the, the gray-headed, like, with the big heads and the eye, like, are those motherfuckers real? I would love to know. And, you know, it's like one of those things where I, 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 don't not believe that they're aliens. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, I know enough about like the universes and stuff, which isn't really that much, but I know enough to know that it would be crazy to think that there's no other life given how many other universes, galaxies, solar systems, planets there are. Only one in all of these can sustain life? I don't think so. However, that's one belief, but you know, how many can come and meet us and do stuff? That's taking it to another level. Again, not impossible. But then it's like dealing with people who are saying these things and trying to see if those people are credible and what they're claiming with other organizations and people who are saying it's not true. It's a lot. So I try to keep an open mind. But at the end of the day, I'm still like, I don't know. I don't know. I I find it interesting, worth looking into. But am I 100%? Do I 100% believe Grush or any of these people, 100%? No. Do I 100% believe the Department of Defense when they come out and they say, we don't have any evidence of it? No. Do I believe Dr. Kirkpatrick? 100%? No. I don't believe anybody anytime at all, most of the time. So I'm just like skeptical with an open mind. Does that make sense? Anyway. Oof, I could go on forever, but thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to every plate for sponsoring this video, supporting my channel so much. And again, let me know what you guys think. Okay. Thank you. Bye.